They are all leading international experts in their respective fields. They are all contributing to humanity's progress worldwide and now in China. They are all aligning their vision with China's future. They are all here on My China. Beijing Foreign Studies University is China's preeminent center of language learning, teaches 72 foreign languages more than any other educational institution in China. The BFSU's German department is a state-level key project. The man teaching German is Patrick Kühnel. He's fluent in several foreign languages, among them Chinese. He even has a Chinese name, Li Ke. Patrick has been teaching German at BFSU since 2010, when he was sent under a program sponsored by the DAAD, the German Academic Exchange Service. This semester, Patrick's main duties are teaching German conversation and oral communication to second-year undergraduates. He also gives a course in simultaneous interpretation to postgraduate students. He is a strong believer in the use of teaching aids. In his next class, he will be teaching his students how to ask for directions in German. I'm actually preparing a jigsaw puzzle. You know, uh, for my students, uh, we're having um, our next lesson will be about how to ask the way in German. So I thought to make it more interesting, uh, and as an introduction, I, I decided to make a puzzle for the class. I'm going to divide the class into four or five groups, and each group is given a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, made of a city map of the city of Passau. This is my city in Germany where I come from. And I thought this would be a good orientation for the students because uh, many of them, they will join an exchange program next year. And they will spend one year in Germany, part of it in Göttingen, another part, another fraction in Passau. And, uh, and so I thought, apart from studying the language, it's good, it would be a good opportunity if they could um, have a glimpse into the city itself, learn a bit about the culture, learn a bit about the surrounding, about the environment, and get a brief orientation. So, yeah, this is what I'm doing now. And as you can see, it's quite a lot of work for just for one hour of teaching. I'm trying to win the contest anyway. <laughs> Probably not the most beautiful jigsaw puzzle in the world, but I hope it will serve its purpose. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Yigazo 
。像李老师的话，就是我们交流起来很方便，就是我们中文、德文都可以交流。<笑>另外就是，其实学生也挺开心，因为学生在刚学德语中间，肯定有些话，肯定德语也讲不周全。跟我们学生写的作文，就很多就中式的德语，让一个纯粹的一个德国人没有中文的背景，他可能不知道他要讲什么东西。像李老师的话，就可以知道，我们还知道他为什么写这个事情，嗯、为什么会用错，用到这个字啊，不没用对，就他跟中文是有关关联的，就可以给你解释清楚。我觉得现在就比较有优势嘛，这样。My colleagues, they're all great teachers. They're very experienced. When you talk to your, your colleagues, you get a different perspective on 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 the on, on the manuals we're using, on the materials. I gain a lot of insights, not only into university life, but also in Chinese society. So this is really valuable. I learn a lot from them. Once a week, Patrick takes a class in undergraduate composition and oral communication. The class begins with him returning the students' homework and commenting on their efforts. You mean, if you want to describe a person, you have to say who he is. Tan Lili, is he your current teacher? Ah, middle school. Middle school teacher. Then you, you should use the past tense. I was thinking for a long time. He said who he is. Who he is? I don't know. Maybe. 哎，你写的很好，但是跟我们的作业没有什么关系。<笑>你你写了一个很有意思的故事，你你注意，老刘，呃，你写的还可以 ，good。现在自己看一下，德语怎么文录？我先考验一下你们的那个语感。我现在用不同的语言写一句话，让你们猜一猜是什么意思。駅はどういったらいいですか？什么意思？意味は何ですか？わかる？セグウッド。那火车站怎么走啊 ？Patrick himself has a degree in linguistics. Sometimes in class, he expresses a simple idea in several languages. He wants to stimulate the students' curiosity and interest. He believes that showing them how German differs from other languages improves their understanding of German vocabulary and grammar. 那么土耳其语这个 git make， 也包括这个日语这个 ik， 法语这个 ale， 汉语这个走去，韩国语这个 kada， 他们都是去的意思。Es gibt also nur die zwei Möglichkeiten: entweder ankommen， 就是到达，或者往那往那个方向去走。但是德语比较例外，德语你要是问这句话的时候，你两个都不用，你用的是第三个，是什么？你不会说 wie gehe ich zum Bahnhof， 你应该说 wie komme ich zum Bahn， 一直走 ，geradeaus， 这个是什么意思？沿着走，沿着这条河走 ，den Fluss entlang gehen。Armed with this knowledge, the class practice asking for directions in the city of Passau. Patrick has built up a very strong relationship with his students. However, when he first came to teach here, he found it very tough. It was very embarrassing for me at the beginning. I remember the first time I came into class, students were sitting there, and I had prepared, of course, my class, and um, so. I told them what we, what we will do this semester. No reaction, no response. Everybody looking at me, but no response. And I said, "Do you have any other suggestions?" Of course, they didn't. But something is wrong here. I had no clue. They wouldn't tell me. So it was very hard for me at that time. I even cried. You know, I came home and I said, "I, I want to go home. I don't want to stay here. I don't know what them. I just, I just entered the class, and there's just this wall of silence." In front of me. <laughs> so, what do you do with them? What do you do now? As the teacher, it was up to him to break the ice. I decided first class. I, I won't do any teaching. I just ask any student about him or herself. Tell me a little about where she comes, where she or he comes from, what, what her his hobbies are, and 
one by one, and after that, I ask them to write a question they want to ask me. And I told them, you can ask me anything. I probably won't answer, but, but still, you can try. And uh, I've started to taking pictures of all of the students, you know, with their name cards in front of them. So I can remember them. I can study them at home. And this makes it easier to get acquainted with them. And so it's time for the jigsaw puzzles to come out and for the students to practice asking for directions by piecing together the picture of puzzle. From the beginning, you can know. Oh, I just saw it. I think this class is very useful. If we go to the puzzle class, I think this class will be very helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you I think studying language is very hard to me too. You have to start. Uh, emerging yourself into a different language apart from the language apart from you know vocabulary and grammar and all that stuff you have to learn that and you have to uh, of course you have to pass your exams and all that but apart from that I really want them to understand that in, in real life not <laughs> at the university in real life uh, it's very important that you are flexible that you are able to really distinguish between studying and learning but I think it's very important because you can study without learning this is wasting effort. And you can learn without studying, by experiencing. And I want my students to experience both of them. They are learning and studying. This is also something that I want to teach my students. Was glauben Sie, welcher Fluss hat mehr Wasser? Falsch. Der Inn hat eigentlich mehr Wasser. Hey, sehr gut. Ah, geben Sie mir bitte das ja. Herr Mach. Dankeschön. China. Combining study with practice, Patrick often takes the students off campus. Today, they are going to an art exhibition to practice interpretation. You Translating, interpreting in class, and on the spot, on the job. So it's quite a different experience, and students, they have um, confirmed that. So this is why I'm doing that, yeah. I have divided the students into different groups. Uh, they are responsible for different fields of art. Some students will be responsible for painting, others for sculpture, and photography, and so on. And after that, each group consists of two students, and I will be pretending to be an art expert, asking some more or less uh, useful questions and hope the students will translate them for me. Uh, I think both of us, students as, as well as me, we can learn something from that today.
Also und kein Jäger machen. Ist das, ist das Öl oder ist das Acryl? Das ist Öl. Also hier sieht man ja gut, ne? ja der, den Fokus im Vordergrund. Der Hintergrund ist verschwommen, so äh, wie eine Fotografie, nicht? Schauen Sie mal, die Glühbirne ist ganz allein ja. an die Wand gehört. Ja. Und das sieht auch ein bisschen ähnlich wie ein Flugmaus aus. So ganz刚才学生翻译其实我觉得都还算蛮流利的因为本身作为国际专员的我也是常常会需要做一些翻译的工作但是以学生来讲我觉得他们的程度流利度其实算很好的这就是实地的训练然后跟课堂上做的教室里翻
，现在孩子一切发育也都挺好的，挺健康的时候，我们回过头来再想啊，我觉得我们整个的家庭。我们四个人现在就是非常的开心，凝聚力也非常的强，感情也比以前更加的紧密。In 2010, Patrick left his teaching post at Paso University to return to China with his family. 有了孩子以后嘛，肯定就是希望孩子能够两种文化都有所接触。嗯，包括语言也学习，需要有这个环境进行培养。所以到了二零一零年，正好这个德国的这个呃德亚蒂有这样的这种工作的机会的时候，呃，然后李克教授申请的时候，就也得到了这个机会，我们全家就接着就搬到了中国。But neither Patrick nor Wen Cheng had ever lived in Beijing before. 刚来的时候，的确是对我们一家来说，其实都是一个挺大的挑战，就一切都是，好像比较杂乱一些。嗯，但是好在是我自己的国家嘛，慢慢的好像会会帮助你很快的进入这样的一个状态。对于教授来说，同事之间非常的友好，有什么变化大家就相互沟通，慢慢慢慢的一点一点的，就是说适应了在中国的这种生活的状态。I've noticed that life in China can become very frustrating because. If if you make plans for the future, you know they cannot keep up with the changes. Very often, things were did not doesn't don't work out the way you had anticipated. Very often, so living in China for many years and studying Chinese has taught me how to become more present. You know, how to increase awareness. You know, probably you know that like in, in Germany, like in many other Western countries, we're used to making plans for the future and uh, reviewing, looking back, reviewing our mistakes and our achievements. And but but all of this takes us away from the present moment. You know, because we're comparing it to what has been and what might become. Both are not real. You know. So, and uh, the problem is for many Westerners how to deal with that. And I have found like probably the best way for me is uh, you 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 keep this this your plans, your concepts, your ideas in mind, but at the same time you stay present here. You are aware. You know, you you're just observing. You're accepting what is. You're probably not thinking too much and have confidence that things they they somehow they will turn out. You want them to. They are all aligning their vision with China's future. They are all here on my China. Song fed to boy, el me la fasu su. With his life and work now firmly on track, Patrick could develop his interest in China. He has written several books on Chinese and German linguistics, and also translated and proofread many books and documents about China. He has also worked hard to promote bilateral relations between his home and adoptive countries. During a vacation in Germany, he and his wife established the Sino-German Association in Passau, with the aim of helping people in the city learn more about China. In a 2014 speech on behalf of the expat staff at the Beijing Foreign Studies University, Patrick said, "If Passau University in Germany is my alma mater, then the BFSU is my alma pater." Last thing, so I I would say you would be interested to increase the number of Chinese, and the subsequent master is to the BFSU's minister. He implanted the idea to improve relationships, and my former vice president, Professor Howe, followed his call, if you wish, and visited the BFSU two years ago, a little more than two years ago. And from that point on, we could talk about student exchange,、uh, maybe、uh, joint programs in the future, and the like. And so Patrick was the the again. He was one of the key people. He was the man for us at the BFSU. 
where I found that actually both universities, Passau University and uh, BFSU, they are a perfect match in a way. You know, they have a very, very, very similar profile. That is, they have a, uh, uh, they are specialized on cultural and language studies on the one hand, but they also have a very strong uh, department of business studies. So I thought this is a very good opportunity for both sides to cooperate not only in one field but in various fields at the same time. I was recently in Germany. He asked me to go to the 然后和他们进行交流那这些事情其实也不见得是任何一个人都愿意做或者是说觉得自己应该做的但他那时候虽然人已经不在帕斯他人已经在北外教书但他让惦记着这些事情来自己来主动安排这些事情他也是我们这个